It's late. You want to go poking around other people's business, you go right on ahead. But if you put your hand into the dog's bowl, don't be surprised if you get bit. Horror is no stranger to being based on life events, but sometimes it seems like events can be too horrific to capture on celluloid. Ty West had his hand in one of the most talked about horror films of the year with X, but he came out of the indie scene where he wasn't afraid to experiment and scare people with a low budget, even having one of the most talked about slow burn indies of 2009 with The House of the Devil. After contributing a few segments in some anthology films, West came back to features in a big way with 2013's The Sacrament, which follows the events of the terrifying and heartbreaking Jonestown Massacre, but how closely? Study up on your South American geography, and whatever you do, check your drinks as we find out what the fuck really happened to the sacrament. Movies made about the Jonestown tragedy had been done before, much closer to the actual event. 1980 housed them both, with the first being the Stuart Whitman-led Guyana Crime of the Century, which was also known as Cult of the Damned. Crime of the Century touches a little bit on the group and Jones before the tragedy, but primarily focuses on the event in question. Its runtime varies wildly depending on what country cut you have, with the US cut being only 90 minutes, and the cut released in Mexico being a whopping 115 minutes long. Whitman plays the title character, here named James Johnson, with Gene Barry playing the concerned congressman who wants to see for himself what the near thousand men, women, and children are getting up to in their secluded part of the world. He has heard that some people are being held against their will, and Johnson is certainly made out to be a villain from the get-go with his physical and emotional abuse of his followers. A few months after that, the TV miniseries Guyana Tragedy, the Jim Jones story, wanted to tell the broader picture and go for less exploitation and more exploration of the man and his beliefs and how they led to the tragedy. It explores his active years first helping those in need before heading to San Francisco and growing his influence. Everything leads to the titular tragedy, and it obviously has a lot more production value and information than its predecessor. Also, while Stuart Whitman and Joseph Cotton are fun Hollywood royalty that followed many of their peers' roads by appearing in movies like this, the CBS miniseries is absolutely stacked. The late Powers Booth would win an Emmy for his portrayal of Jones and would be joined by Ned Beatty, Veronica Cartwright, Brad Dourif, James Earl Jones, Meg Foster, Randy Quaid, and LeVar Burton in various roles. While there were a handful of documentaries made on the subject, fictional accounts would go away almost completely. Eli Roth would help Ty West produce his take on the story, while also having his own jungle-themed movie, an homage to Cannibal Holocaust, shown at the Toronto Film Festival the same year. West decided to go the found footage route with the sacrament, partly inspired by the footage found that would help authorities piece together what happened, and partially because 2013 was right in the middle of horror's found footage boom. With the history of the story behind us, just how closely does the sacrament follow its inspiration? The movie opens with a scroll explaining what vice is, followed by a correspondent from the company explaining an intriguing situation that came up with one of their top photographers involving his sister possibly being taken into a cult. Journalist Sam, Patrick, whose sister is the one in question, and camera guy Jake decide to fly out to the isolated community to check on Patrick's sister, as well as see what Eden Parish is all about. The three land and the helicopter pilot warns them that he'll leave promptly at 8 a.m. the next day and will not wait for them. While the bones of the setup here are similar, there are some key differences. Vice was obviously not around at the time the events took place, and although there were countless families concerned for their members who were involved at Jonestown, it was not just three members of the media traveling with someone who had a sister at the camp. Instead, it was a congressman from California named Leo Ryan, and he flew with nearly eight times as many companions as the film depicts. These include the U.S. Ambassador to Guyana, a large group of reporters, and several family members of the people within the community under Jones. Additionally, while Eden Parish absolutely sounds like a factual place, in real life it was called Jonestown, with Jonestown being founded by an organization called the People's Temple Agricultural Project. The film being a found footage is a chilling nod to the so-called death tape found by authorities, giving them a better grasp of what happened. The movie then has Patrick reuniting with his sister and the three men from Vice being allowed into the community. They spend the day interviewing parishioners from all races and walks of life about how their life in the community is and what their lives were before they came to Eden Parish. Patrick's sister Caroline informs them that Father has invited them to stay for their party and will give them an interview while there, even if it's only 30 minutes. The party takes place at a large outdoor church where Sam interviews Father about everything going on, his real name, and how this all came to be. 
father, played coincidentally by actor Gene Jones, does a great job deflecting harder questions and making Sam look both weak and as the aggressor with accusations of the media trying to attack them and how the poisonous outside world can be. The movie changes names, time frames, number of visitors, and a lot of other details, but Wes definitely did his homework. Words, anyway. When the Ryan party first arrived, they were told only a handful of them would be allowed into the compound, but the others eventually got in after sundown for, you guessed it, a party that was to happen that evening. Father is not only the nickname of Charles Anderson Reed in the movie, but it's also what Jim Jones wanted everyone to refer to him as. During the interview, Sam asks where Reed started, and while he makes a statement about being in every small town and big city there is, Jones started his religious career as a small town preacher in Indianapolis, before doing many odd jobs to raise enough to create his own. One of these odd jobs included selling monkeys door to door. Yeah, really. Father in the film is hinted at having some health issues, but doesn't come off as completely crazy, rather just passionate about his beliefs. Jones, on the other hand, had increasingly declining health and was starting to lose his grip on reality. These included, but were not limited to, Jones having conspiracy theories about the CIA and FBI trying to get him. San Francisco reporter for The Examiner, Tim Reiterman, even noted after covering Jones for over a decade, it was strange to see how bad he looked in person. Finally, while the world seemingly doesn't know who Father is outside of Eden Parish, Jim Jones was quite well known to the country, particularly in San Francisco where he resided for some time and built his fame. The movie moves on from the interview, and while Sam is disappointed in himself for dropping the ball in the interview, he is shocked with how nice Eden Parish is and believes the people are happy. Later during the night, a small child hands Sam a note that asks him to save them before walking away. Oh, shit. The veil of the peaceful community falls off and everything begins to be more sinister. Caroline tries to stand up to the group and make them feel safer while explaining that they want to keep her brother here now before Father gives Sam and Jake an ominous warning. You want to go poking around other people's business, you go right on ahead. But if you put your hand into the dog's bowl, don't be surprised if you get bit. What's that supposed to mean? You boys have a nice evening. The next day, several members of the people living in the community are scared and ready to go home. The vice crew agree to take a few and go back to stall the helicopter and figure out what to do with the many people that are ready to leave. Much of this section happens nearly exactly how it happens on film. Ryan and his group are not completely sold on the peaceful intentions of Jim Jones, particularly with his growing insanity and declining health, but it doesn't seem like the dangerous cult they feared it was. That is, until they were handed two notes that let Ryan know that things were very, very wrong. Where it deviates significantly is that the entire party wasn't permitted to stay the night. Only Ryan and a few others stayed in Jonestown while the others were told to find housing elsewhere and went south. The next morning, Ryan was indeed approached by several scared members of Jones' flock who were ready to get out and emigrate back to the States. He agreed and had multiple planes set up for takeoff. The final chunk of the movie is a very dramatic and horrifying retelling of what could have happened. The pilot is told to wait, but doesn't want to before he is shot, and Jake flees into the jungle, pursued by father's armed guards. Back at the main area of camp, everything falls apart. Patrick is taken away while Sam is knocked unconscious, and father tells everyone that it's time to move on. The harrowing Kool-Aid scene happens, and it's truly awful with some people not wanting to go through with it, and even children being given their doses of poison. Patrick is killed by his sister when she injects the poison directly into him, and then she lights herself on fire to join him. And greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. Jake finds father with a tied up Sam, and father turns the gun on himself. Bam. Bam. Eventually, Sam and Jake escape with the help of a guard that decides to let them go, and they make it to the helicopter and escape from a massive tragedy. The real-life events are just as horrifying, but went down a bit differently. Jones allowed Ryan and his people to get to the airport before having the pilot of one of the planes and a small militia on the outside open fire on the fleeing group. Congressman Ryan and a handful of others were slain, while some survivors packed themselves into a Cessna aircraft and escaped with their lives. The rest of the congregation had some people able to flee, but the majority of them ended their lives by drinking that fatal concoction. Jones himself was later found sitting in his throne with a single bullet to the head. The real-life death total was a little less than what the text says after the movie ends, but it remained the biggest loss of American lives until the tragic events of 9-11. The Sacrament is an effective horror film that tells its own version of one of the worst events in our history. 
It's different enough in its details out of respect and the urge to have compelling storytelling, but it's shocking there wasn't a based on credit somewhere in there as many of the proceedings happened nearly exactly as they did at Jonestown. Check out the details if you dare, but watching the movie is close enough to real life for most people, including yours truly. Thank <laughs> you.